Now, you will find that this word, imbalances, is being used quite often. Right? Because this imbalances comes from uh, uh, different, different parts. One of these imbalances is in terms of what the Americans are doing and what the Chinese are doing. Right? We will see later in the afternoon uh, when we talk about how the Americans are spending too much and the Chinese are saving too much. <laughs> so if you want to save the world economy, please, this evening, when you go back, go and do some shopping. <laughs> because the Americans say that that's the problem. <laughs> right? uh, similarly, you also have uh, trade problems. You have countries like the US, for instance, having a huge trade deficit. Uh, just yesterday's report, the deficit for the US has increased again for trade. Obviously, trade deficit for them would mean trade surplus for us. That is another one of those imbalances that exists. Right? So you will see this term imbalances, as I said in the beginning just now, that the problem that we have is the problems are different in different parts of the world, and so the solutions that are being introduced by some countries is having an adverse effect in other countries. So for instance, if we talk about interest rates, in the US, they are keeping their interest rates low. But in China, because we have an inflation problem, interest rates are pushed up. When you have one country, interest rates are low. Another country, interest rate is high. What will happen to money? Money flows from one to the other. Right? So on the one hand, when we try to reduce the money in China, but it also means money is flowing into China from outside. Right? So as long as China keeps on increasing the interest rates, the pressure on the RMB is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Right? So you can see the problems are different. Solutions have to be different as well. But because we are more globalized, it becomes much more problematic. Now, let me turn the attention to Asia. Uh, this is uh, some stuff that I've taken from an article that appeared in the Financial Times uh, some time ago. Where it talks about while the US is worried about a double dip recession, this W, and in Europe they are worried about this sovereign debt uh, default, uh, Greece, Portugal, Spain, Italy. Asia, on the other hand, is in a very confident mood. Right? Our problems here are very different from what they have in Europe and the US. Right? In 2010, for instance, right from India to Australia, on average, 8.6% 8, 8 growth. So while in one part of the world they are struggling to have positive growth, on the other side here in Asia, we are actually having an average of more than 8% growth. This is the fastest pace in 20 years. Right? So, of course, in Asia, the question is what crisis? Look at some of, it, some of these examples here. In countries like South Korea, Indonesia, 
these countries are actually in better shape than before the crisis. India has rarely bought a post for bread. China, of course, we know. But China's growth is also helping countries like Australia, Indonesia, these countries with natural resources to also have high economic growth. As I mentioned before the break, for the first time, Asia's contribution to a global recovery is outstripping that of other regions. For the first time in history, the world is looking at Asia to save them from the crisis. Right? So, the question that comes up, two interesting questions, two important questions that comes up. The first question is, how has Asia's export-dependent economies proved to be so resilient? How is it that while the rest of the world, uh, especially Europe and North America, are going through these economic problems, how is it that Asia's growth seems to be better than before? If we can answer that question, the second question will be, is this sustainable? I'll try to answer the first question. The second question you have to answer. Okay? Right. So, for the first question as to why Asia is resilient, there are probably four reasons for this. I, I think the first reason is probably the most important one. The reason why Asia is resilient is because we had our problems 12 years ago. We had our own crisis in 97-98. If you think about it, sometimes I say, thank God we had our crisis in 97. Because if not for the 97 crisis in Asia, we would have been wiped out. So luckily we had the 97 crisis. Because as a result of the 97-98 crisis, we were able to rebuild our financial system. The official date for the crisis was July 2nd, 1997. Many of the currencies in uh, these East Asian countries were very much pegged to the dollar. In Thailand, for example, it was 25 baht to the dollar. 25 baht for a long time. You remember the speculators were playing this game. They were betting that this ban that the Bank of Thailand had created will be broken. So they were selling the bot. You sell the bot, what does Bank of Thailand do? They buy. You sell, I buy. You sell, I buy. You sell, I buy. What do you use to buy? Where is the dollar coming from? Reserves. So you sell, I buy. You sell, I buy. The reserves decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. It decreased to one day. They had only two billion dollars in the reserve. Two billion for an economy is very small, huh? July 2nd, 1997. The Bank of Thailand issued a memo saying that we will not defend the bot any longer. 
so you sell. <laughs> you sell. <laughs> right? So the baht basically collapses. At one time, from 25 baht to the dollar, it goes to 50 baht to the dollar. Thailand finish, they go to South Korea with the won. Huh? Same story. Finish Korea, they go to Indonesia. Finish Indonesia, they went to Malaysia. After Malaysia, they went to Hong Kong. Hong Kong, you know, it is a packed currency. 7.8 Hong Kong dollars to one US dollar. So they started to sell the Hong Kong dollar. You sell, the Hong Kong Monetary Authority buys it. One day, okay. Two days, okay. Third day, Hong Kong got word. On the fourth day, People's Bank of China issues a memo. They said, if Hong Kong cannot defend their currency, we will defend it for them. And the speculators backed off. <laughs> huh? this, is, this is what? Tiger, right? <laughs> Right? That was 1997-1998. Right? The entire financial system of uh, Thailand, Korea, nearly all countries in the region were basically battered. Why did they have this problem? This is not very different from the problem that the US had in uh, 2007. You remember the subprime crisis? It was the same problem. I remember in 1994, I was working in New Zealand. And during the summer when I go back to Malaysia, all my friends talked about was two things. Real estate, stock market. <laughs> Sounds very familiar, right? Real estate was so good. <laughs> Even before one toothpick goes into the ground, <laughs> that real estate has been sold, resold, resold three times. <laughs> Stock market. My friends were saying, in one day, I can make half a million dollars. <laughs> Go in the morning, come out in the afternoon, half a million dollars. At that point in time, if you were to say, I'm going to invest in Asia, you have no problem getting the money. Banks were queuing up to give you the money. Because it was so good. But of course, the bubble did first. Then they realized that money has been given to people that they should not have given in the first place. Subprime crisis? Same story. Right? So what these countries had was 10 years to clean up the mess. <coughs> to put in regulations so that the financial system is not playing with things that are too risky. <coughs> that is why, as far as the subprime crisis in the US is concerned, many of the banks in Asia were not involved. <coughs> because the new regulations did not allow them to buy these subprime assets.
as I mentioned just now, for countries like Thailand. When they had this economic problem. And the currency collapses. This is actually good news. Because now you can export more. Your exports are cheaper in the market. When the Americans came to Thailand for holiday, this was so cheap. They washed their hands with beer. So So they were able to export this problem out. And they, as they started to export more and more and more, your trade becomes more into surplus. And that surplus gives you your reserves. With the reserves also, you have access for the government to spend this on infrastructure. 